Welcome to another watercolour workshop. This is 15 by 11 inch, 130 pound Fabriano watercolour paper. I'm using the large Ron Ranson Hike. The only other brush I'll be using in this painting will be the number three rigger. And I've got my usual palette, seven colours, ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, alizarin crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber and light red. I've wet the paper all over, put on a very weak wash of raw sienna and this is a mixture of ultramarine and Payne's grey. Not worried too much at the moment about where the strokes are going. You can see at the top there I painted some negative shapes. They're the the clouds. Just painted around the white clouds at the top of the sky there. This is a uh, Buttermere in the English Lake District. I'm printing the distant hills using the same colours that I did for the sky. Well, that, that does look a little bit more blue, to be fair. I'm trying to keep them the same as the sky, it does, it does make your painting look better. But try not to go over the same piece of paper more than once, it leaves those little misty areas, the white, those little white patches between it, the strokes just makes it look more interesting. This is a bit more raw sienna for the closer hill now as we come slightly forward in the painting. And again a bit more on the other side coming down towards the banks of the, of the, the lake. These are some trees I've, I'm putting in now, just using the corner of the height brush. I've added a bit of Payne's grey just to try and help it make it stand out a bit, the, the tree's profile. I'm trying to be careful not to make it stand out too much, because the, the strongest tones should always be in the foreground closer to the viewer. A few more trees on the other side. Again just using the corner of the hike. Mix, the hike makes it very easy for doing this sort of thing. I'm trying to vary the colour as I move along just to try and keep it interesting. A few sweeps now down, down the hillside, a bit more raw sienna. I'm trying to leave a few little gaps here and there, a few white patches just to Leave a bit of mystery. Strengthening the banks of the lake there on the far side. A few dibs and dabs as I come down, a bit more ultramarine in it there. Just dibs and dabs along the lake. lake. If you can't get a straight chisel edge with the height, just dip the very, very tips into your water just to bring all the, the hairs together. Paper's stretched a little bit, so I'm just refixed it there on the right hand side. But you can see with the background, getting it in before the water, the paper dries, it just creates the more, just makes everything look a little bit more misty, a bit more interesting. I don't like hard edges in the distance, so I always try and get it in before the paper dries. Just wetting the water area now, I just want to make it slightly stronger in the water. Get some of the sky colours and mountain colours in there, or hills rather.
I'm just going to dry it before I start to put the foreground in. Just using the hair dryer to speed things up. You can sit and wait if you wish, but I prefer to get on with it. So I'm going to start on the left hand side with a little tree stroke bush. Again just using the corner of the hike. It's mainly lemon yellow, ultramarine and pines grey. working out how far down I need to bring this this little tree just scraping in the uh, few trunks and branches with a fingernail needs to be at least half dry before you start scraping so you got to make sure that the water's the, the mix is not too wet, otherwise you, you it won't you just won't be able to scrape it out. It'll just fill in again before it dries. Just put in some leaves. Just again, just very light touches. This is the number three rigger now. Just flicking out a few twigs, poking out between the leaves. I'm just going to stick a few, just a little few leaves on the end of those twigs again. Very light touch with the corner of the hake. It's mainly um, lemon yellow, Payne's grey. Back down on the ground now. Raw sienna, just a touch of light red, not too much red, it's such a strong colour. It becomes overpowered and it just looks ridiculous after a bit. This is just the shoreline by the viewer. Back to the number three rig and again just flicking in a few more branches. This is another little bush that lives by this tree. few more flicks with the fingernail. So easy to overdo that. It's so tempting. This is the shore now just put in very simply with a few quick sweep of the ache. That was ultramarine and burnt umber then. And just flicking up. with a hike to create some uh, reeds 
a few more flicks of the fingernail this is just a, an old fence an old fence broken fence post I'm just going to put in there just adds a bit of interest just very lightly chisel edged hike again if if you can't get the hairs to just dip the very very tip of the hike brush in the water and it'll just bring the hairs together just bring a little bit of reflection in the water not being particularly accurate with it and I just want to put a bit of um, shoreline on the right hand side of the foreground just looks a little bit bare over that side but first a few more flicks and add just to ground that fence so it doesn't look as if it's floating in the air few more reeds going in very very light just very light lightest of touches So it was back into the ultramarine and burnt umber for a quick sweep to put the shorting on the other side. A few more dabs here and there, the, the bits of mud and what have you. A few more flicks up. And I'm just taking a plastic card here, use a credit card, whatever you've got handy, and just scraping in a few stones and rocks. Again, try not to overdo it. Just keep it subtle. I think all that's left now is to put the signature on it. Have we'll finished painting. Thanks for watching. That's Buttermere in the English Lake District, and hopefully I'll see you again soon.